What's up guys, this is PradMC from PR Tech Reviews, and I'm here to do a tutorial on Mac OS X Automator. Let's get started. Alrighty guys, Mac OS X Automator, very interesting application. Basically, OS X Automator is used to automate certain tasks that you wouldn't want to repetitive, repetitively do throughout the day. Um, such as one task as in purge, which is if you are a uh, Unix command line nerd, you would know that that basically frees your inactive memory and gives you more memory or kind of simulates a reboot. Or say you weren't a nerd and you wanted to automate a task like uh, import new music into iTunes uh, right when you put them in the folder that you that you specify. That's pretty much what Automator does. And it's actually a really cool application to start writing your own OS X applications, one of your first OS X applications. And I guess I'll demonstrate uh, how and how I used Automator and how, how many different features there are in Automator. So, alright guys, I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. Um, I have Automator open right now on my desktop. As you can see right here, um, it has... When you first open it from where uh, from Launchpad, if you're on Mountain Lion or Lion, or from Snow Leopard, just the Applications folder, it will open up just like this. It will have what is that? Uh, seven different uh, choices to choose your type of document. So I'll, I'll explain them very quickly. A workflow is basically like say you were making a movie in like Adobe Premiere Pro, but you didn't ex export it yet. That's what a workflow is like. It's just like the save file for Automator. That's how it usually saves everything. Um, an application is basically like an exported movie. It's an application. It's a dot app. Um, it runs in OS X just like any other app would. So that's what the application will do. Um, a service is kind of interesting. Um, it actually can run anywhere. See, as you can see right here, services, and I have a purge service right there. But services can run anywhere, and are usually you can use keyboard sh shortcuts to activate them. So that's why services are mainly used for because you can activate them via keyboard shortcuts, and they're very useful because they can be used almost in any application, and it's a universal keyboard shortcut around the whole OS. So, um, print plugin, I'm not sure. I've never actually used it and I haven't actually looked it up, but I'm pretty sure it's um, after you print something or a plugin just for a printer, I have no clue and I've never actually seen someone demonstrate print plugin. So, um, I most likely will have that in the description below or annotation, something. I'll have a banner or something that says what it is. Um, folder action is really cool because what happens is if uh, you set a folder up, or you set a target folder, and once that folder either gets a new file, deletes a new file, adds a new folder, deletes a new folder inside that folder, um, it will start to do whatever you tell the workflow to do, um, which is really cool. Uh, I use it, um, mainly one example I use it for is when I add music to my music folder, it adds it to my iTunes library automatically, so I don't have to import it um, by myself, which is very useful. I mean... It sometimes I do have a large collection of songs that I do because usually I do um, download my, uh, many of my songs at the same time, so I do have a large collection of songs that I don't want to just import one by one manually. So it'll do it for me for all of them, which is really useful. I really do like that feature. Calendar alarm is basically a workflow that happens at a certain time, so I could set up a time on the calendar every week, every day, whatever, and it would run the workflow. Good if you wanted to make a workflow about maintenance. It's a very useful feature. And then the image capture plugin, actually, there's actually, it's in the, um, you can use just like the actions library on the side right here. It has an image capture plugin, but basically this one I think is oriented more to where the workflow is all based on a picture taken by the webcam, which is also a really cool feature. I'll get into it later. Uh, but right now, I want to show you guys a couple of my automator scripts that I have actually made. My most recent one, which is really cool, is my login.app. So let me open it up right here. All right, let me scroll to the top. So right here, I made this uh, application to run at startup. And basically, it, ta um, it says a lot of 
it it basically um, does a lot of things for me at startup that I mean normally you wouldn't do but it, it's really cool so right here it runs a shell, shell script say glad to see you again Pratt so every time I log in it will say glad to see you again Pratt which is really cool I mean I don't see any other computers doing that so it kind of amazes my friends when it goes glad to see you again Pratt so it's really cool and then it pauses and it looks for the time so I wrote a time.app which is basically um, in Automator they actually um, they added variables which is really nice you can even make your own variables but basically it would take so I use for time I use the current time variable and all I would do is drag the current time variable it would catch the time and then I just added the, again this script right here say and then I would put in um, the time the current time variable into the into the script which is really cool I really like doing that same thing I did with the date so it tells me glad to see you again Pratt the time the date and then background that app, that app, that app is the most interesting one that I've seen uh, I've seen it all over YouTube I've seen basically any animator video that you ever watch will be like any animator tip would be this one right here basically what it does is it goes to a website so because in Automator you can go to um, a website and you can download the images so I got the images from the web page just because um, the website that I am using is uh, what's it's a NASA website it's a picture of the day of space which is really cool so what happens is it goes to that website downloads the image to a folder that I spe specify which I'll tell you guys later and then it sets that as my desktop background so every time I log in it was, uh, I'll have a new desktop background um, available for me and then um, the next thing it does is open Spotify which is I mean it automatically opens for me but usually it's on a different desktop as I can show you right here I have many desktops so um, I usually just it goes straight to Spotify if I click yes and then it opens a folder that I made for the background for the backgrounds that I download so I can see which ones I like and if I don't like the one that I just have I could change it back to the one from the previous day or whatever so I'll show you guys the, uh, this working let's see if the audio will come through too um, it will not receive input it's fine so let's see if the shell script runs sometimes it does have a kind of lag to it glad to see you again Pratt it is So as you can see, PM. it sometimes has a lag. And today's date is August 2nd, 2013. Here is a new desktop background, Pratt. So as you can see, it changed my desktop background. Would you like me to open Spotify? Okay, so I'm going to click Okay, yes. here so you as go. As you can see, it directed me to Spotify. I'm going to go back here. And all the shell scripts uh, worked fine. You can see the seconds of duration it took. Some of them, like, see, background took some time. Date and time, it says seven and five seconds, but it did it did produce noticeable lag. That's why sometimes these workflows don't work as good. But that's because the shell script sometimes hang sometimes hangs when you say say. So I need to figure out a way to end that phrase. I'm not sure how to. So if anybody has a tip, leave in the comment section below, and I'll add it to the description of this video. Um, but that's one workflow that you can make, but there's just numerous amounts of workflows that you can make. There's so many different things you could do, so many different, like, options that you can select, and there's so many different variables that you can choose from, especially if you use a lot of the iOS apps like Contacts and Calendar, like iCal and Contacts and iTunes. It's very useful. Even iPhoto, as you can see right here, iPhoto. Um, you can get specified i uh, iPhoto albums. It's just it's very useful, um, especially if you have to do a lot of moving around files or moving around just just plain like just using the application and you need a lot of files going in and out. This is a very good application to use, and I suggest that um, you do take the time to try to make a workflow if you really um, if it would really save some time. It really does save me some time. I do use the my music music import service so if I um, if I click shift command I it does start my music import service which is really cool um, actually let's just open that 
Um, basically, I made a music import service, which is really cool. Hopefully, it's the right one because I have a service and a dot app. But basically, what it does is it hides all my apps at the beginning. Um, it gets the day, the month, and the year. It asks me for the, the, the songs that I'm adding to my library. It takes those songs and puts them into a playlist with the day, like the month, the day, the year, which is really cool. And then it syncs my iPod. So that's very useful, especially because if I do have a lot of music, I have to search each individual song. Or I have to search each album and add it to the playlist. It just takes too long. So Automator is just great for doing tasks like that. And I really do enjoy using it. So... So yeah, guys, that's my review of Automator for Mac OS X. If you like this, um, if you liked my review or my tutorial on this application, please, uh, please hit that thumbs up button for me. And ironic, it really helps us out. We really need, um, we really need the support. Uh, like, comment, rate, subscribe, everything uh, up on the above. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, this is Prime C from PR Tech Reviews. I'll catch you guys later. Thank <laughs> you.